Okay, new video, but same attire. I am currently in between trying to film probably what is the fifth or sixth um, attempt at a reading vlog. We're going to see how this goes. Hopefully it goes well and I can give you my bookish thoughts at the end of it. Hi everyone, my name is Rose, also known as T.A. Summers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a five book reading vlog. I am not 100% sure how this is going to go. This may take place over several hours or several days, but my hope is that I will have this up on the channel within a timely manner to be able to reflect on these five books and whittle down some of the books that are on my currently reading list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. I will make a mention of each of the, or I will actually showcase some of the five books that I am going to be reading in this respective video. You may recognize some of them from the list of 24 that I had in the previous video. And we're just going to get right into it in terms of showcasing that little brief snippet. And then we'll see what happens. I hope you enjoy. See you on the other side. First, I'm going to start off with um, talking about these five books and um, prioritizing these first. So let me just go ahead and go through uh, what books I have chosen for this respective vlog to start off with. And then if we get through more, then I will add um, clips to this particular video. So the first one that I want to highlight is Tilly Walden's Are You Listening? And this is the cover for it right here. This is a graphic novel and I'm hoping to be able to get through this pretty soon. Second one is the second book to the trilogy by Lisa McMahon. This is Bang. This is the cover for this right here. Originally, I was going to read the third book in this respective series for this uh, reading vlog, but unfortunately, because of time and then also because of various frustrations that I had with this respective book, um, it didn't make this respective vlog, but I definitely will get to the third book as soon as I possibly can for this. This is Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. This was published by Tor. And it is essentially a space horror that I was really excited to be able to get the um, NetGalley art for and also be able to pick up the final copy from my library. One that um, it's from an author that is not new to me, but this is the first time that I am reading the author's work in quite some time. This is uh, Victor LaVale's The Battle of Black Tom. I've heard great things about this um, respective book. And I, uh, or novella, I should say, and I would classify this as horror. I was not expecting um, the story to like um, be um, the way that it was, but you'll see more of my thoughts um, in this respective vlog as I talk about it. So this is definitely horror, adult horror. And then lastly is a comic that I picked up from my library um, fairly recently when I went to recheck some items. This is Batman: The Fall and the Fallen. So you can see this is the cover right here. So f without further ado, I'm just going to transition into each of the um, reflections that I have for each of these books in this reading vlog, and you can see what happens. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, the time is now 7 p.m. I have finally finished the first book in this respective reading vlog. This is a novella um, published by Tor and also by the author Victor LaVale. This is the Black Ballad of Black Tom, and oh boy, this story was not what I expected it to be. It was pleasantly surprising and thrilling in a way that I was not expecting at all. So to sum up what this particular book is about, this is about a man, well, the main character is a man named Charles Thomas um, Tester, or um, Tommy Tester, as he know, he's known on the streets of Harlem and um, other places. This takes place in, around 1924, around Harlem, Queens, and various areas. And essentially, this tw uh, 20-something year old man is a musician. Not a very good musician uh, in terms of playing an instrument as well as singing, but that is the trade that he, uh, Charles Thomas Tester is in. It's really a cover for his actual job, uh, which is dealing in the business of magic. He lives with his father 
Um, his mother um, passed away um, several years before, and his father is living, uh, he's living with his father in Harlem and essentially like um, taking on these shady deals with different people. Things change for Charles Thomas Tester when he comes across a sorceress to whom he sells a very, I guess, uh, a controversial book of sorcery. And that particular sale has him in the eyes of, of some very interesting characters who um, take note of this particular deal and try to involve him in some very shady business that involves magic. That That's the sum of what this book, be, where this book begins. I, it's hard to talk about this without spoiling the experience, but I came into this um, particular book thinking that it was basically dark fantasy. And by the end of the book, it is straight up horror. I, I was not expecting it to be as thrilling of a ride as it took me on. The very first part is a bit harrowing as it showcases Charles Thomas Tester, like getting into some confrontations with a few police officers, as well as the um, wealthy benefactor who hires him on to um, play for um, a, a group of guests for um, some money. And uh, and Tommy Tester um, takes a deal like uh, with the promise of money and things like that and gets in over his head very, very quickly with uh, a lot of surreal things that happen that he witnesses and that happens to him in the um, measure of the book. At first, I um, wondered why there was a perspective change about halfway through the book, uh, the um, story uh, in terms of shifting from um, Tommy Tester's, uh, Charles Thomas Tester's perspective to the detective whose name is Malone, who had been uh, basically suspicious of uh, Tommy Tester's uh, whereabouts in um, the wealthier parts of um, the neighborhoods and um, dealing with this benefactor. But then I realized where the relevance of that was as the story went on. And essentially, um, when that perspective um, change comes from uh, shifting from Charles Thomas Tester's, Tommy Tester's perspective to Malone's, it does a, a, a very 180 uh, um, turn in terms of things that happen very quickly and very harrowingly in terms of the story. I will not spoil it more than that, but this was a wild ride and I really, really enjoyed it, uh, surprisingly. Uh, so I, I struggled to uh, know what to give this perspective novella. I, this is not the only story that I've read from Victor uh, LaVale, but this is the first one that I have read in a while. So this is one that I definitely, um, that definitely makes me want to pick up more of the author's work, uh, respectively. I think for the sake of the story in terms of um, how interesting it is, I, I'm tempted to give it 4.5 stars as of this time. I have not written a review on Goodreads yet, but let's stick to 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It definitely uh, thrilled me, like, um, from, uh, like, uh, especially, like, once it hits that middle point and the perspective change in terms of what happens to Charles Thomas Tester and essentially the role that he plays in this respective story. So I give The Ballad of Black Tom... Uh, by Victor LaVale, 4.5 out of 5 stars. So it is super, super late at the time that I'm filming the second part to this reading vlog. Uh, I did finish The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. This is a book that I not only received as a net galley copy, but I also picked up a copy of the book from my library to kind of compare it to. It's pretty um, much similar, but Basically, what this book is about is a captain who is aboard the Calypso. Her name is Jacqueline Albright, and essentially she is the acting captain of the Calypso while um, their ship is escaping a uh, failed planetary colony and heading back towards Earth. But they're in particular uh, dire straits in terms of the survi survivors trying to make their way to um, Earth be with limited rations and also in v a very, very unwelcome entity that is slowly picking off uh, some of the people who are on the ship. I thought that this was a very well done 
space horror novella. Um, it essentially does a very good job of establishing the characters, doing the world building, establishing the stakes that Jack has to face, um, uh, also known as Jacqueline, but she, uh, she's mostly called Jack within the um, spectrum of the story. I also liked her uh, helper bot, which is named Watson. And you get to see Jack and Watson um, basically team up um, alongside the uh, crew members to try to ensure the survival of the um, ship with these, um, with not only the um, particular conflicts that are happening between the passengers and the tensions with low rations and things like that in terms of trying to get onto Earth, but also the menacing entity that is picking off passengers uh, of the ship. And essentially, Jack has to put the pieces together between several mysteries to see um, what these um, beings are that are attacking the ship, as well as um, who's responsible for um, them being on the ship as well as other things. So I thought this was a wonderful uh, novella. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is from Tor Nightfire and I would definitely recommend it and I definitely enjoyed it. So by the time that you see the next segment of this, it will be another day. So I'm going to continue reading some of the other books that are on my list and I will give you um, my thoughts about it on the other side. See ya. Okay, so this is going to be a very quick um, reflection in terms of things. It is literally the next day. I'm still in the middle of this 24-hour, 48-hour readathon, and I'm trying to kind of pick up my pace a little bit because I know that this video has to go up on time. It may be slightly delayed depending on how the um, encoding um, uh turns out but if that's the case then i'll just put a, a note on my community tab on my youtube channel and also on twitter but um i finished reading the third book in um my respective reading vlog this is tilly walden's are you listening and as you can see this is the cover right here this is a very emotional graphic novel which i thought was remarkably well written and remarkably illustrated you can actually see some of the artwork in terms of the um, journey that these two um, unlikely friends at meet as they go on a road trip. And essentially what this um, graphic novel is about is um, showcasing a teenage runaway named B, who you don't know at the very beginning of the um, novel uh, why um, she's running away from home, but she runs into Lou, who is um, in, I think, their 20s and essentially driving a car and um in the middle of traffic and the two of them both Lou and B go on a, across a, a country um road trip or across um cross statewide um road trip in terms of trying to get to a specific address and you kind of find out the story of their respective friendship um through this novel as well as the cat that they find too which i think the cat is named diamond and diamond is really cute but this is a very emotional story of um them coming to terms with various traumas that they've both endured in their respective lives and as they come to know each other, um, um, grow closer together. And it's a bit um, surreal in terms of the type of story that it tells um, um, this respective story. Definitely heed the trigger warnings for this respective graphic novel, but I thought it was a wonderful ride. I thought it was very well done. If a bit kind of sluggish in the pacing, but I understand why it told its respective story the way that it did. And in um, such an evocative way. I gave this um, Tilly Walden's Are You Listening an overall four um, stars out of five and I would definitely read more from the author in the future. This was a wonderful read. I'm glad that I had the opportunity to pick it up and we will see um, um, where, where my journey goes with respect to the author's uh, future works as well. So there's that. So I am going to dive back into my um, reading vlog, finish the last two books in this video, and then I think we will be done. So see you on the other side. <sighs> I kind of dread having to review this respective book that I'm about to um, do, but this is the fourth book in my respective reading vlog. 
and I'm just going to jump right into it. So I read the second book in the Visions um, trilogy by Lisa McMahon. This is Bang, and this is the second cover for it. I've mentioned in my previous videos that I was going to read this as part of my reading vlog. If you have not already watched my um, previous review of Crash, I can put it up in the cards for you as well as in the description down below if you've missed it. But oh boy. So this is where I say that Lisa McMahon has some of the most interesting premises of um, with respect to her YA work in terms of ideas, but as far as the execution goes, it is not the best. And none, none um, is a greater example than what I'm seeing from this respective series right here with Visions, especially in this book, Bang, because it has a banger, no pun intended, of a premise, but the execution of it is not great. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just start off with where th this um, particular book starts, where the previous book Visions uh, or um, Crash, uh, sorry, Crash is the first book in the Visions uh, trilogy. So Bang is the second one. And this picks up where Crash left off. So you have Jules who has determined that in terms of kissing Sawyer towards the end of the book, she has given him her um, previous ability, the ability to see things that are um, coming in terms of a disastrous vision. And so Sawyer, um, her love interest, uh, ends up seeing a horrible um, tragedy, which involves a shooting, and um, he doesn't know what to uh, make of it. But of course, that's not kind of, that you would think that's the center of this particular tale, but it's not in terms of things because there's a lot of drama and a lot of other things that happen in the book in the intermediary that kind of take away the focus from that particular uh, premise. So there's a lot of teenage drama. Jules's um, voice, like she kind of has like girl girl fights with like, you know, another person who's interested in Sawyer, some family drama, other things that could into the core of Bang before we even get to the point of where like it, the central theme of this is ta tackled. So that's kind of the frustration that I have with this respective series because it's like the, I'm interested in seeing like, you know, the visions that Sawyer has uh, of this particular shooting and he's trying to grapple with it the uh, best that he can. And he's horrified by it in the same way that Jules was when she saw the crash in the first books. But in this respective um, follow up, um, Sawyer's uh, who um, basically is telling her um, of what he sees in terms of his, um, his events is kind of sidelined for tour um, with respect to showcasing all the other parts of the story, like in terms of kind of like a diversion for, from things. So it's a little frustrating, to be honest with you, because this is such a strong premise uh like for, uh, for this particular series and uh like the central story itself is harrowing but the execution of it kind of diverts towards other things that kind of take away from the narrative and make it longer than it has to be so I, i'll say that say it like that but overall in terms of I, i'm not going to spoil it too much in terms of like the events but i will say that both Jules and Sawyer have to work together to figure out the events of uh, where the uh, school shooting is taking place, um, who's involved in it, and um, that sort of thing. And they do end up figuring out um, where the uh, school shooting is um, taking place. It takes place on a university campus. They find out what the uh, motivations of the shooter are. It has to do with targeting a, a, a GSA, a gay, a, a gay um, student alliance. Um, in terms of like the um, students affect it and they go in trying to figure out uh, see if they can stop it um, before it happens in terms of Sawyer's vision even though it changes for him and Sawyer tries to grapple with that but as far as the other elements of this particular story we have um, relationship drama family drama relationship drama things like that stuff that's going on with the siblings stuff that's going on with Jules's mom and dad in terms of like her father cheating with uh, another person and things like that it's just a lot a lot of drama a lot of drama like um in the interim um 
going on between um, that and the main part of this particular story. So I think that's where my frustration with this particular series is in terms of what it features. But overall, I gave this 2.5 out of 5 stars. It did keep me engaged, but I just hated the fact that I had to wade through so much to get to the uh, point of this um, particular story. And the way that it ends is kind of on a cliffhanger in terms of things. And it's it goes exactly like you think it would, like in the first um, book of this particular um, series where um, they don't know if another person has the respective visions that Jules and Sawyer had, it, like in terms of the per uh, person that they end up saving. So I guess we'll see what happens in the third book of this. I don't know... Um, what like I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to just leap into the last book gasp um for this respective trilogy or if I want to pick up something else because this one was kind of frustrating for me to get through so um I'll let you know on the other side of this and give you my thoughts but this was Bang by Lisa McMahon the second in the Visions trilogy 2.5 out of 5 stars. Okay, last book finished. So this is a bit of a diversion from what I was originally um, going to finish for this respective reading vlog. I recently went to uh, my local library and uh, rechecked several books out, but I also picked up several other ones, one of which is a comic in terms of um, a franchise that I haven't visited in quite some time, but I still ended up enjoying this particular volume for what it offered in terms of the main storyline, as well as the um, accompanying stories that were compiled in this particular volume. This is Batman, the um, Fall in the Fallen compilation. This is volume 11, and it is by um, Tom King, Mikel Janine, and um, Jorge Fornes. And this is essentially a store. There's a main story to this as well as several side stories that are unrelated to the main story. But this basically covers a um, story in which Bruce Wayne meets Thomas Wayne, which is the Flashpoint Batman. And essentially um, the main villain in this particular um, story is Bane. And you kind of follow uh, Batman as he's um, going through on these series of mind manipulations and things like that to uh, eventually meet up with um, Flashpoint Batman or Thomas Wayne. And there's a key piece of um, plot line in terms of the proposal of um, Bruce um, deciding to uh, having to fight for either um, this timeline where he is happy and um, being with his family again and um, uh, and uh, taking this other um option where like that none of that is possible and it's tempting i'm not going to spoil too much about what the story entails in case anyone has not read this respective volume or kind of knows the events in it but it was an interesting story and it was interestingly told um within this particular timeline i liked it i didn't love it some aspects of it i think were a little bit um like in terms of the pacing a little bit off but I did really like the storyline and I liked the accompanying stories that on uh, side stories, especially the one with the Joker. That was definitely classic Batman and Joker uh, rivalry for me in terms of seeing that particular side story in this. But overall, I gave this, I think, three out of five stars. I like the artwork. I like the overarching story, but it wasn't one of my favorite ba Batman stories, if I'm being honest about it. And it was a quick read. I read this inside of an hour to be able to complete. So it was a very quick read for me in terms of things. But that is it for this perspective um, vlog in terms of reading vlog. I had to do a lot of swapping out in terms of things with respect to my reading vlog because there were certain books that I wanted to get to that I wasn't able to um, finish. And there were other things that um, happened in terms of interfering with my timeline in terms of um, reading uh, that um, unfortunately I couldn't read as many books as I wanted to but we'll see how this goes it's probably going to be a nightmare for me to edit and I already know that it may impact when this video goes up but hopefully it shouldn't take too long and you'll be able to see this on the channel very soon thanks so much for following me on this respective five book um reading vlog. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be informed of when I post new videos. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next video.